Good afternoon, everyone. Mike Winkler. I'd like to take a minute here, and I wanted to talk about the multi-tenancy feature in QRadar. Now, I'm hoping this isn't the first of my video series you're catching, because I'm really starting in the middle of a concept, um, and this is definitely not the place to start. But multi-tenancy and why we care about it is there's a number of reasons you're going to want to break up your data inside QRadar. So you're still collecting flows and events and all of that, but you want it discreetly stored. Um, the biggest reason is managed service provider customers. They want to be able to take their own customers and keep customer A and customer B's data uh, discreetly separated and legally separated. Um, there's a number of regulatory reasons, what's called data sharding, so that you may want to go through, and even if you're one company, to store the data separately if because of uh, residency issues with where your business units are, or maybe even HR issues. But it allows you to keep discreetly, logically separate data that we know isn't contaminated, one business unit to another, or one uh, customer to another. You may be trying to consolidate your instances at QRadar. I have a couple of customers that have bought other folks and um, they, have their, um, they have their own instances of QRadar that by using multi-tenancy, they don't need to re-architect the entire environment but can reduce the amount of hardware. And speaking of that, sometimes we are just reducing the amount of hardware. The last reason I tend to see multi-tenancy used is uh, discrete dashboards and reports. So if I separate out all of the functions of, say, the East Coast operations, I can then log in as East Coast guy and all of my dashboards and my reports will just show East Coast operations. Okay, fair enough. I want to go through a couple of examples of this. The first is um, multi-tenant client one and client two. In this case, they're each attaching to their own event processor. Now, the event processors are smart enough to identify um, that it is coming from processor one and processor two. So when the console gets it, it's going to know things are coming from client two because they're coming from processor two. And all the data will be stored explicitly as being marked processor two. But things often get a little more complicated than that. What if these clients are coming in across different firewalls? In this case, uh, firewall one and firewall two, any brand, any variety alike. And I can say that the event processor is smart enough to see the log source equals firewall number two. So I know this data belongs to client number two. Okay, and uh, can continue down the road, make it slightly more complicated, although this is a more common example. I know what IP address something is coming in from, or maybe a series of IP addresses, right? Maybe client one is 05 and dot 15 and dot 25, and client two is in dot 10, dot 20, and dot 30. I can set the multi-tenancy up so that it's coming in through the firewall. I can recognize the IP, so the event processor is going to show I know that this is client number two because he's coming in an IP that I've mapped to client number two. And just one more example for you here. Um, if we look at client one and client two, and I'm going to say that there's a custom data field I have mapped. Now, this could be something you're doing at the log source. This could be a way you're uh, enriching the data with Elk and Cabana, or just something you know is going to happen at that given customer field. And I have folks definitely doing this. So I can have them going off into firewall number one, and the event processor is going to be smart enough to go through and say, I have a custom field that equals Barney so that I know that this is client number two, my dashboards, my reports, my authentication will all um, resemble the fact that this will be client number two. I am Mike Winkler, and this has been a lesson in multi-tenancy.